It's been just over eight weeks and these sweet potato slips are ready to go into the garden. I can tell because they just look like they're malnutritioned and they need to be in the garden. They're big enough and actually you don't even need to have roots to grow sweet potato slips in the garden. It just helps them get a better start. So as an experiment, I'm going to take these slips that I have here, all in various stages of growth, ones with lots of roots, one with some roots and some with barely any at all, and I'm going to plant them all and see as a comparison how well they do and if it does make sense to grow them in water in the house and let them grow their roots before we put them in the soil outside. So let's go outside and get the ground ready to plant these sweet potato slips. It's in the morning, it's cool out here, and this is the perfect time to plant plants in the garden. Here I have my potato bed, over here I have my red potatoes that I grew, and here on this row I'm putting in the sweet potatoes. I'm going to turn this soil to loosen it up, and I'm going to add the mid-light of pre-plant fertilizer and the weekly feed and turn that in. But before I do that, I'm just going to walk down the aisle here and see if there are any weeds, because I don't want to turn the weeds in. And since there are so few, I do want to remove, oh, here's one right here. I do want to remove them and get them out of the garden. So there's one. This is the advantage of having custom soil. There are very few weeds in here, and when they are, they're easy to remove. As you can see, I've also removed the watering line for the automatic watering system. I put it over here out of the way so I can go in and get this tilled by hand. I'll do that and I'll be right back. This is one watering line where I'm putting the sweet potato slips. And so I've added one ounce of pre-plant fertilizer and a half an ounce of pre-plant fertilizer per linear foot. This is a 15 foot bed. So I have seven and a half ounces of weekly feed and 15 ounces of pre-plant. Now it's time to mix it in. Because I'm only doing half of a four foot wide bed and it's only 15 feet long, it took me literally about two and a half minutes to till this all by hand using the shovel. Another big advantage of having the custom 75% sawdust, 25% coarse sand soil mixture is very easy to work with. Now that I've got everything turned in, I'm simply going to take the back of my 14 inch garden rake and level it off. A 12 inch garden rake would also work well. If you're not familiar with the mid-light of pre-plant fertilizer or the weekly feed, you mix those yourself. So it's very inexpensive to do with items you get at your local nursery or big box store and then some micronutrients you can order online. Please look at the links below this video for more information and resources to get those items. That was about a three minutes worth of work there. I'm a little picky on how things look, so I took some extra time. But now I've got it leveled out, just kind of by eye, and it's time to mark where I'm going to plant the sweet potatoes. I went through and took about less than a minute to mark the entire 15 foot bed because I'm using this garden marker, which is uh, very, very handy to use. I have a video on this. Please take a look at the link below. But anyway, I can quickly mark six inches or seven inch increments here. I'm going to be planting the sweet potato slips every 12 inches in alternating rows. So I'll be using each one of these marks and I'll show you how I'll do that. But this garden marker really is a fast and easy way to set up a garden for planting. As you can see, I've reinstalled the automatic watering system PVC pipe. have a video on that too. Please take a look at the link below. This is awesome. The day I put in the automatic watering system was a great day. It really allowed me a lot of freedom from having to come out in here and hand water. But anyway, highly recommend that. Very inexpensive to do. Everything with the Midlighter system has a purpose and a specific reason why it's done exactly that way. For example, this support here. This is a six inch long piece of treated two by four with two galvanized finish nails holding it up. Now you notice right now it's sitting very close to where I'm going to plant. The nice design about this is I can simply pop the pipe out and move the support a few inches either way so it's not in the way of planting. Another thing I use this for is my measurement. 
I wanted to plant ab about four inches away from the pipe. I know that this is three inches, so I'm going to plant about here, which is about two inches away from the edge. And so I'm going to plant about the same distance on the other side of the pipe here too. It makes planting very quick and easy for me as I'm going down the row. Again, just trust the system and everything will make sense once you start using it. Just for experimental purposes, I'm going to be planting in order of which plants have the most amount of roots. So here, this plant has the majority of roots, so it's going to go first and then so forth down the line. Also, I'm planting in alternate rows. So I'll plant this one in on this mark here, then six inches in, I'll start the next row, and then this plant here is 12 inches away from that plant. I'm planting them 12 inches apart in alternating rows. So I'm actually going to be using every one of these marks that I made. I deliberately put these plants in about three inches of water when I was growing them because that's about how deep I want to plant them. So I've made my hole, I've moved the soil off to the side, I'm simply going to put the plant in and then simply move the soil back into the hole without pressing down and packing down the soil. We want the soil to be nice and light so the roots can grow quickly and easily and make lots of potatoes. This is true for any plant that you're transplanting. You can see the debris from me pruning the plants as I'm transplanting them. I don't want any leaves on the ground and I don't want any of these discolored leaves on the plant. So I'm just taking them off as I transplant them. So here I have all the ones that have roots planted into the soil. Now from about this first pipe support, excluding these two plants here, these have very little and lessening roots on each of the plants. But they're tall enough, I've removed them from the sweet potato itself, so I'm going to put them in the garden. So this should give us a good test to see if more roots means more potatoes. These are all planted on the same day, and so half the bed is planted in April, and we'll plant the other half in May. Just because I could, I did orient the plants so that the leaves were pointing south as much as possible. I don't know if that makes any difference, but might as well do it because I can. I'm planting these a little early. Typically these are planted in May when temperatures are hot. But we have, for the foreseeable future, nighttime temperatures in the high 60s and daytime temperatures in the high 70s or 80s. Typically you need 120 days for sweet potatoes to mature. And so if you live in a northern climate where you don't have four months of 70 to 80, 90 degree temperatures, you can grow sweet potatoes easily. All you would do is you would take this bed here, you would put some PVC pipe arches over here, just like I did on top of this here, and bend it over and then put plastic over it and then you can start your plants in early April like I am and keep them covered until temperatures do get into the 70s or 80s and then as things start to cool off on the other end of the season put the plastic back on. So really you can grow sweet potatoes anywhere if you use a mini greenhouse in the garden. I'm actually going to build a cover for this bed because I want to protect them from the wind. So I'll show you how to do that in a future video. Now it's time to put the nitrogen fertilizer on there to help them with transplant shock. When we transplant, we use one fourth of an ounce per linear foot for the plants. Since I have seven and a half feet, then I'm gonna use 1.87 ounces. And I'm using my all-purpose fertilizer here, which is 2100. You may find something that's, that has higher nitrogen in it up to 3500 and I keep it here in the corner of my shed with my weekly feed and my Mitlider pre-plant fertilizer. Because we're supposed to put fertilizers about four inches away from the plants I use my watering pipe as a measuring. Since these plants are planted an inch beyond this port here and this support goes three inches past the pipe I know the plants are about four inches away from the pipe so I just run my fertilizer whether it's weekly feed or nitrogen when I'm transplanting, right down the center. Then I water it in with my garden hose with a watering wand on it. All the plants are in, and now I'm just going to make sure that they get watered properly. Since I only water for 60 seconds once a day at seven o'clock in the morning, 
I'm going to come out here for the first week and water in the afternoon, maybe around 1 or 2 or 3 o'clock to keep these new transplants nice and moist. On hindsight, I should have planted these on the other side of the bed. I'm facing south right now and on the west side I have the red potatoes which grow taller than the kind of ground cover sweet potatoes. So they may be shadowing the sweet potatoes. You do want to have your taller plants on the north or east side of your garden beds. So next year I may switch that up. But anyway, I'm glad to have half my bed of sweet potatoes in the ground. Looking forward to seeing these plants grow and produce my first crop of sweet potatoes. And as things progress, I'll give you updates every couple weeks so you can see how things are going. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you take the time to grow sweet potato slips inside and have the patience to let them grow for about eight weeks, then transfer them to the garden, you can enjoy sweet potato pie, sweet potato chips, and sweet potatoes prepared lots of different ways.